I'm Robert Kirshner. I'm uh, the Chief Program Officer for Science at the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. And the Moore Foundation has supported the United States Geological Survey, UC Berkeley, Caltech, and the University of Washington to work together to understand earthquakes and to develop this earthquake early warning system you've been hearing about. So our private foundation has invested in public and private institutions, and this has had the wonderful effect of bringing a reliable, prompt, and effective earthquake early warning system within our grasp. I'm an astronomer and a teacher, and so I'm going to tell you something about how earthquakes result from the universe in which we live. So human, uh, human and terrestrial events, of course, are small in the cosmic perspective. A lot has happened uh, since the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. The Super Bowl, for example, is not among the top 10 events of cosmic history. <laughs> but there's a kind of recycling that takes place in the cosmos where stars generate their energy from nuclear fusion, and the ashes of that fusion become the material for the next generation of, the st of stars. The Earth formed from the ashes of previous generations of stars, and it's been kept warm since its formation by radioactive elements that were made in the supernova explosions that took place more than five billion years ago. Seismologists know that the Earth is still hot and that the core of the Earth is still molten from that early event and that ongoing heating. And that's what makes the Earth such a restless planet. Continents sliding around on a slippery foundation and that has a great deal to do with why the Earth rips as earthquakes. Since we live on the surface of the Earth, I think it's not wrong for us to have some special interest in all of this. When rocks rip uh, along faults in the crust, uh, earthquakes result. And so they're a natural and inevitable part of an active planet, and they're a very serious risk uh, for human beings. So understanding the big cosmic picture and the details of how earthquakes work is a good thing. And the Moore Foundation seeks to support path-breaking scientific research. And we're proud to support the outstanding seismologists you've heard from today. The waves an earthquake generates uh, can be detected and used to provide a precious seconds of warning so you can take actions that reduce injuries and protect property. So it's not just the high-minded pursuit of science. There's also this public service. And I am a homeowner living within sight of the San Andreas Fault. And you can, I can tell you, it's not just in the abstract that I'm pleased that we're making progress toward an effective and reliable earthquake warning system. So I'm here today to tell you that the Moore Foundation is making a further commitment of $3.6 million to earthquake early warning. That's good. Uh, this brings our contribution to more than $10 million since 2011, and it will bring the system closer to implementation. I think if I push this button, something will happen. What button is it? it is. It's up. It's oh, there we go. Excellent. So let me just tell you a little about that. UC Berkeley is going to move forward with a novel plan to explore how the same sensors that are in your cell phone, the ones that count your steps, um, can be employed as earthquake sensors. Uh, expanding the capacity of the network, and it has the potential to include uh, remote parts of the Earth where cell phones are common, but seismometers are not. Caltech is going to develop a human, a human-like, <laughs> we're going to be a human-like person at Caltech, a human-like <laughs> decision-making process <laughs> to gather information from seismic networks and to help issue prompt and reliable alerts. This has to be done by a machine that never sleeps. It has to be done fast because the warning time is measured in seconds, and it has to be done right so the BART trains do not stop without a good reason. Well, sometimes they do stop without a good reason, but I've been on them, but anyway, not from the false alarms. Uh, and the University of Washington, as you heard, will explore the design of a network of sensors on the ocean floor where the greatest risk to the Pacific Northwest lies. Adding to our uh, private investment funding, I am delighted to announce that Puget Sound Energy has approved a $100,000 grant to the University of Washington Pacific Northwest Seismic Network to purchase strong motion seismometers over the next four years to significantly improve the earthquake early warning capacity. Pacific Gas and Electric 
will join the Shake Alert system, working with UC Berkeley to develop automated and human actions in the seconds before an earthquake uh, strikes to protect lives, decrease property damage, and ensure rapid service restoration. Intel Corporation will gather private sector businesses and lead discussions about the role they can play. Oregon's largest private sector employer, Intel has capital investments of more than $25 billion. Intel will make ShakeAlert part of its crisis management program, enabling the high-tech community uh, to react quickly to an earthquake warning, saving millions of dollars per hour in potential downtime. Amazon Catalyst has pledged a research grant to the University of Washington to integrate GPS, global positioning system capabilities, into the network to more accurately measure the size of large earthquakes. On the side of public investments, the U.S. Geological Survey uh, received $8.2 million, as we've heard in the recent uh, omnibus bill, for the Shake Alert earthquake early warning system. And this was an important step toward uh, activating this system for public benefit. And from the beginning, the USGS has been the spearhead, uh, working with state, university, and private sector partners to establish the network, lead the decision tree, and run alert tests. Uh, just yesterday, the USGS proposed rules to reduce delivery delays and ensure consistent delivery across multiple technology platforms. I've got one platform here. I've got another platform there. I want them to both work. They're also working with the U.S. Forest Service uh, to expedite placing seismic monitors on Forest Service land and with the FCC uh, to get new rules that will enhance the delivery of emergency alerts. Today, President Obama signed an executive order establishing a federal earthquake risk management standard to improve the ability of federal buildings to function after an earthquake, reduce risk to people, reduce post-quake recovery costs, and make it possible for communities to recover swiftly. Finally, I want to tell you about uh, several significant state and local commitments that will support areas that will benefit most from earthquake early warning. Governor Kate Brown of the state of Oregon recently hired a state resilience officer and acquired 15 seismometers for nearly $700,000. Maybe she'll have one installed in fr her front yard, as you can do if you're Secretary of the Interior. The governor advocates collaborating with federal partners, universities, and other stakeholders uh, to develop a public education program on the best ways to respond to earthquake alerts. The city of Eugene, Oregon, will host public forums to educate the community, and the Eugene Water and Electric Board, along with the University of Oregon, will place four earthquake early warning sensors uh, to improve the Pacific Seismic Northwest Network. Governor Jay Inslee of the state of Washington will make earthquake and tsunami preparedness and resilience a priority. Washington State has experienced 15 major destructive earthquakes in the last 150 years. The state will invest $4.6 million to map, identify, and better anticipate geologic hazards and will support a tsunami safe haven project that will open in June. So that's a good list. Cosmic time is long. Human life is short, and it's that mismatch between the geological time scale and the human time scale that's one reason we have such a hard time understanding the risk that big earthquakes pose. Even in earthquake country, there may be a strong shock once in a decade or once in a century, but we know they will happen. We know how to provide warning, and out of concern for ourselves and our fellow citizens, we really must do this. In 1775, Paul Revere's horse trotted faster than the Redcoats plodded on their way to Concord and Lexington. He provided early warning. The Redcoats are coming. That made a difference in the history of the United States. Shake Alert's early warning is broadcast at the speed of light. That's 100,000 times faster than the speed of shaking waves going through a rock. It can make a difference to America, too. Duck, cover, and hold on.